Hey, I'm John Timmerman. I'm here to dissect the world's most exciting businesses so that you and I can grow ours faster. Today, I want to talk a little bit about the evolution of social media platforms and particularly looking at what is now Facebook, uh, which is sort of one of the more devalued platforms. Now, I'm specifically talking about Facebook, the platform, not the overall meta companies, which owns Instagram and WhatsApp and Oculus VR, but specifically Facebook. And the question is, is Facebook dying? Is it dead? Now, globally, Facebook is still doing very well, well over 2 billion um, uh, users. Now, is that daily users? We don't really know. But there's an interesting phenomenon that's happening and that we've now seen it in its full life cycle with social media platforms. And what sparked this conversation about what happens with social media platforms when they grow rapidly, they get popular, uh, uh, you know, how do they keep scaling? Um, is the, the thing that sparked this conversation with my team is the app Be Real, which is, I believe, the fastest growing app uh, in the Apple App Store here in the United States. So, what is the Be Real app? Be Real is quite simply, it's a very simple app. All you do is when you download the app, it will, once a day, it will send a warning to you, a notification that says Be Real will start in two minutes or you have two minutes to capture your Be Real. It's either or a picture or a video um, from the front of your camera and the back of your camera. So whatever you're looking at, it will snap a picture and then it will also snap a picture of your face, right? Experiencing that or a short video. And that's it. Doesn't allow you to edit it. Doesn't allow you to do anything to it. It will just post it just right there, right? So this is such a new concept, right? Like it's uh, it's time sensitive. You have to do it within this two minute block. Uh, you can only do it once a day. It's real. It's unedited, right? So hence the name Be Real. So my team and I were like, what's the validity of this actually becoming a valuable platform, especially for businesses? And we were kind of strategizing how businesses could use Be Real. And then we started talking about the evolution of platforms. And here is the evolution in a nutshell. Okay, let's take Facebook. 2005, I was still in college. Um, that's when it sort of became a college platform, right? So kids got on Facebook and it became the social media platform because it was really the only major one out there. And um, uh, uh, so kids loved it, sharing all sorts of stuff, food. Well, then our parents started to become interested. Like, what is this Facebook platform? And once it got ex expanded beyond colleges and universities, then parents started to get on it and they started to share their pictures of their food and pictures of their projects and stuff. And they started to comment on all the kids' photos. And the kids on there were like, I don't want my parents in my business and, and seeing all my stuff. So then they look for another platform, okay? So then uh, they look for a platform maybe like Instagram, okay? Instagram is a place where I can share, pl uh, share stuff. Uh, Tumblr was another one at the time uh, that was kind of up and, com up and coming. Uh, MySpace was another one that's sort of now not a, even a platform really, right? So they started to move over to those platforms, okay? And then the parents got on those platforms because they're like, oh, the, I want to go where the cool people are and the cool people are the young generation. So I'm going to go over there and spend time. And then the kids are like, man, my parents keep following me around, so I'm going to find another one. So then they move to Instagram and they do the same thing on Instagram. And then parents come over and they get onto Instagram. So the kids start to the, look for another platform. And then they look for TikTok. And now we're on TikTok culture, right? We're in TikTok uh, uh, influence. Influencers, uh, the biggest influencers, the biggest celebrities are all over TikTok. They have huge followings and huge influence. Parents are on TikTok now. Parents are invested in what their kids are doing and being cool and helping their kids and supporting their kids. And so they're doing TikToks. And uh, brands and businesses are all over TikTok. So what happens is the kids look for the next platform. Enter, be real. So this evolution happens with every single platform, but there's just a few outliers. And this is the point to this whole thing is that the platforms that focus on entertainment are the ones that appear to have a limited life cycle. So Facebook, mostly entertainment, sharing stuff you're doing and other people having sort of this voyeuristic uh, look into your life, right? Same thing on Instagram, voyeuristic look into your life. Same thing on TikTok, entertainment, a lot of comedy, a lot of music, a lot of funny stuff happening there, but also people uh, kind of sharing their insights, voyeuristic uh, uh, look into your life. The ones that are different are YouTube, Pinterest, 
uh, and podcasting if you want to loop that into social media, although that's not as much because it doesn't have shareability and commenting yet. Okay, so YouTube and Pinterest are very unique because they are utility. YouTube is the, song, the, the second uh, largest search engine um, in the United States, next to Google, who owns YouTube. Pinterest is a, uh, drives billions of dollars in sales and revenue, uh, especially in spaces like DIY and makeup and uh, uh, home decor uh, and sort of like office inspo, things like that, right? Fashion. Because it's utilitarian, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a platform people go for inspiration to buy stuff or design stuff a very particular way. And that's why Pinterest is used still widely for people all different ages, and it doesn't really have a diminishing cool factor because people use it to get something more valuable in their life. Same thing with YouTube. YouTube is a place where people go to learn how to do stuff, to figure out how to how things are done, to learn, to get more information that they can apply to their life. The other platforms like TikTok and Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat, mostly entertainment. If you go onto the featured page on any of those platforms, it's generally filled with visual uh, or emotional entertainment. And those platforms historically diminish in terms of value uh, in the consumer's eyes. So why am I telling you this? As a business or somebody trying to grow a brand, paying attention to the evergreen platforms is a good strategy. When you invest in a YouTube video, creating it, putting it out there, growing it, it has a tendency to be evergreen, meaning in five years, somebody can still be fed that video as something that they would like. That's how the YouTube algorithm works. Pinterest, same thing. It's not based on what was just post, posted or what is trending. It's based on the thing that is going to deliver you value. So it's more of an evergreen platform. If you look at the most widely used search platform, Google, Evergreen, it's going to deliver you the thing that is going to bring you the most value based on your search, whether it's five years ago, it was posted five years ago, or whether it was posted five minutes ago, okay? You can even go over to the top consumer e-commerce platform, Amazon, okay? It doesn't matter if the brand's been around for 10 years or whether it's been around for one year. It's going to show you the listing that is closely matching the thing that you are searching for. So as a marketer, as a business builder, focus on the platforms that will bring you long-term value, long-term organic value for the next decade if you want long-term success, and then spend a small percentage of your efforts and resources into the flashy, entertaining platform. So right now, it's TikTok. Invest in TikTok. It can bring you tons of sales. We have a client actually that... Um, they're, they're in the hunting space. And uh, the founder posted a couple of TikToks of him just sort of describing his product. And both of them got over a million views and we sold $50,000, maybe more than $50,000 worth of product just from those TikTok videos, okay? But those TikTok videos sort of capped at their views after about a week and they're not going up very much anymore, right? Because the platform is presenting the newer videos to people, okay? So you constantly have to feed the beast with these entertaining platforms. You don't constantly have to keep feeding the beast as aggressively for the evergreen platforms like Pinterest and YouTube and Google as it relates to SEO and Amazon as it relates to e-commerce. So the tip here, invest in the evergreen platforms something like 50 to 80% of the time and invest in the more flashy, trending platforms the remainder of the time, and you will build a nice, broad, omni-channel marketing strategy. Listen, if you found this valuable, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Head over and find me on TikTok. I talk all about marketing and business growth strategies on both those platforms. And if you need help with your marketing, check out my agency, Good Monster, or just shoot me a DM. I'd be happy to answer questions. I love chatting for free. Uh, with people just about their businesses and what they got going on. Uh, I love it. So I'd be happy to connect with any of you out there. See you in the next video.